In this video, we're going to be covering the formula derivations for cubes, cuboids, cylinders, cones, pyramids, and spheres. So, let's get started! Okay, so in this video, we're going to be covering the volume and surface area of some common 3D shapes. So, the first one we have is the cube. So, cubes have all equal sides throughout the entire shape. So, to calculate the volume, we would just multiply these two S's together to get the base, or whichever other base. Then you would multiply by another S to cover, the, to cover the entire cube. So the volume would just be S times S times S, or V is equal to S cube. Next, for the surface area, so we would take one of the bases or one of the sides, which would be all the same because all of the side lengths are the same. So one side, like the one I'm just going to do in green, so one side would be just S squared, and there's six of these sides, so it would be 6S squared. So the surface area is 6S squared. Next we have a cuboid or a rectangular prism. So to calculate this one, which you also probably know how to do, we would take, we would calculate one of the bases. So in this case, I'm just going to take green side times a blue side. So the blue side, I'm just going to label them. So we'll just call this green here the height. We'll call this blue here the width. And we'll also get another color, um, maybe red. And this I'm going to label as the length. So if you multiply them together, you would get the volume. So V is equal to L times W times H. And for the surface area, this one is slightly trickier. So the surface area, well, if you notice on any rectangular prism or a cuboid, there's actually two of the same side going on three times. So for this black side, there would be a replica on this other side, for the top side. There would be a replica on the bottom side. And for the left side, there would be a replica on the, replica on the right. So we just need to take two times all of those different sides. So the first one would be LW. The next one would be LH. And the next one would be WH. So that would be the surface area of a cuboid or rectangular prism. The next one on the list is a cylinder. So for a cylinder, what we would do is we would calculate the base. So this base, and we would have to multiply it up by the height to get the entire shape. So the base in for a cylinder is a circle and a circle is just pi r squared. So pi r squared and then we multiply by the height. So multiply by the height. So volume is equal to pi r squared times the height. And now for a surface area. So the surface area consists of two circles. So this circle and 
this circle as well as this sort of circular shell around this which I'm going to write in green so for the two circles we have pi r square times 2 because there are two circles and for this sort of outer shell I guess I'll call it we would have to add the circumference of the circle so the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r and we'd have to multiply it up by this height so we multiply it by its height and if you think about it that'll sort of get this shell to extend upward throughout the entire cylinder so plus 2 pi r times h so if you simplify this you would get 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h and if you were to factor out 2 pi r you would get surface area is equal to 2 pi r r plus h So now let's get into the cone. So I'm going to start off with the volume. So the volume is actually one third base times height. And the actual proof for that is in calculus, but if you look if you look at it, if we took this cone and we turn the sides sort of into a cylinder. If you look at it, you can actually kind of see that it does look like one third of the cylinder. And the base times height is the cylinder. And if you look at it, this cone does only take around one third of the cylinder. So, in this case, for the cone's case, the base is one third pi r square times height. But that is only because it has a circular base and it's a cone. So I'm just going to write V like that. So now we go to the surface area. So I'm just going to label a few of these things so this would be the radius and this would be the height and this over here this is s for the slant and there is a 90 degree angle between them. So now we need to get the surface area. So along with the volume, the true derivation with this lies within calculus, but this is how much we can do without it. So the first thing would be its base, which is just pi r square. And then we need to get this thing that sort of coils up from this base, which I guess I'll label it this. So all of this that sort of that sort of coils up from the base. So that is actually instead of pi r square, that is actually pi r s. And if you solve this, you would get s a is equal to pi r multiplied by r plus s and let's say that you weren't given s but you still needed to find the surface area well if you look in our diagram they're actually 90 degrees which means we can apply the Pythagorean theorem 
and we can say that s is equal to square root of h square plus r square and you can fill this in for the value of s in case it wasn't given to you and you can say sa is equal to pi r r plus square root of h square plus r square in parentheses like that. So next we move on to the pyramid. And this is on this is pretty much the same as the cone. The volume for this is one third base times height because this is also a fixture that sort of cones in uniformly from the base. And if we do the same thing as we did to the cone where we drew a cylinder, if you were to sort of visualize it and draw points upward. My drawing is not the greatest, but if you did draw it, you can see this does kind of look like one third the full thing, which is a good trick to remember the formula. So now if I were to label these, length and width, that means that the volume would be equal to one third LW for the base multiplied by the height. So next we have the surface area and to solve this I'm just going to label our height here as height. So for the surface area first we're going to do the base so that's just LW then we need to add up all of these triangles. So, since it's a rectangular pyramid, there are two sets of triangles that are the same. So, the first one is uses this slant here, which I'm going to call, I guess, S1, and then this slant here, which I'll call S2, and this would be mirrored on the other two sides. So if you were to solve this and you knew those two slants, then we could simply say LW plus L times S2 See, I'm going to write this in a new line. S2. So the first one would be L times S2 times one half, and then there's two of these, so times two. So these two cancel out, and we're left with just L times S2. We also have we also have S one, so W times S one times one half times two. These two cancel, and we're left with plus W times S one. So. So now we're left with the scenario in, in which case we weren't actually given S1 and S2 and we need to solve for them. 
So let's solve for S1 first. So if we weren't given S1, S1 is S1 can be looked at as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Like this. So one side of it is this H. One side of it is H over there. And the other side of it would be one half of L. If you look over here, it's one half of L. So if we were to solve for S1 here using the Pythagorean theorem, that's equal to one half of L. So I'm going to write L by two squared plus H squared and the square root. And the square root like that. So that's S1. And for S2, we do the exact same thing. So for S2, <clears throat> S2 is the hypotenuse of this right triangle with H as one side and one half of W as the other side. So S2 is equal to the square root of w by 2 squared plus h squared. So if you didn't know s1 and s2, you can substitute these values in for s1 and s2. So if I try to write it, s a is equal to LW plus L multiplied by the square root of W by two squared plus h squared and then we do plus and I don't have enough room here so I'm just gonna write it like that so plus we have w multiplied by the square root of L by 2 squared plus H squared. So if you didn't know the slants, this would be the full extensive formula of doing it. Of course, if you probably can't remember this, so you can just literally find out all of the triangles here using the slants and then just add the base at the end. So that's an easy way of remembering this instead of using the formula. So moving on to a sphere, I'm just going to cover the surface area first. And the true derivation of this is again through calculus, but this is how you can sort of think your way through it. So if you had one circle of the biggest section in the sphere, This would, of course, be pi r square. So if you were to sort of look at it, you can see that it would take four of these circles to cover the whole thing. And the surface area is four pi r square. SA is equal to four pi r square. And you can see that it would take like four of these circles to cover the whole thing. So next we have our volume. So for the volume of the sphere, 
I'm just going to get rid of this so I have an open canvas. So for the volume of the sphere, if I had if I had sort of cones lining the outside of the sphere like this, and we had a lot of these cones making the entire making the entire sphere. So I had way more of these cones. So obviously to make this actually in a spherical shape, we would need to continue this pattern until these bases, these bases here were infinitesimally small, really, really, really tiny. And that would eventually create a perfect sphere. So if we were to write that, the formula for all of the, for these cones, well, if we remember the volume of a cone, that's one third base times height. But in this case, for these cones, this height here is actually the radius of this cube. If you look at it, this height here, so I'm gonna go in red, this height, is actually just the radius of the sphere, not cube, sorry. So we can replace this h with, we can replace it with one third base times r. So if we took all of the bases, which I'm going to represent as capitalized B, so one third capitalized B R with all of these bases being multiplied by one third in R. What would happen is since these are so infinitesimally, infinitesimally small, these bases here are just actually making up the surface area. So what we can do is we can replace this base over here, all of these bases together, and we can replace all of those bases together with one third times four times pi r square times r. So if we were to simplify this, this gets you four third pi r cubed. So that's how you can sort of think your way through that one. So four thirds pi r cubed. So the last shape we have is the hemisphere. And for the hemisphere, I'm pretty sure that you can, that you probably know how to find out what this is. So if we start off with the surface area, so this surface area that I'm putting in a light blue here, this one would just be equal to one half of the surface area for the whole for the whole sphere. So it's equal to so one half times for pi r square, but you'll notice we also have one more thing here, and that would be this circle here. So the area of a circle is just pi r square. So we're just going to add pi r square to this equation. And if we simplified that, it's just sa is equal to three pi r square. The volume is even easier than that. We just take one half of the sphere's volume. So one half, four by three pi r cubed, which is just, that's just two thirds. So two thirds pi r cubed. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.